your it's top five favorite John Hughes. Movies. Okay. Not what I thought we were doing. I missed that text message. That's fine. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Taste Like Music. Jason, Joe, and Crams are here. Psychedelic Furs Week, and it is time for side three. Time to talk about some movies. Uh, something we haven't done in a while. It's been a long time since we've had a movie theme on side three. Uh, talking about John Hughes movies. Obviously, Pretty in Pink, the influence behind this topic. Uh, we're going to be talking about our favorite John Hughes movies. Uh, any any John Hughes movie, not necessarily his uh, directorial efforts, but things that he wrote or produced, I think, are also eligible. So uh, I think if you watch this channel a lot, you probably know by now that I'm not a huge movie buff. I have seen five John Hughes movies. Uh, I don't know if I've seen enough of them recently enough to be able to discuss them in great detail, but I will list some that I like. Shall I kick it off? You want to go first, Joe? Got a list right here. Uh, all right. In order from worst to best, all 36. No, I'm kidding. Uh, top five. We'll do top five. Number five. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with Uncle Buck. I love John Candy and it was just a, a role that was like made for him. Like it might have been made for him. I don't know. I don't know the story behind it, but John Hughes directed, wrote, and produced it. <clears throat> it's a fun 80s movie. Fine, fine movie. Uh, number four, eh, we'll dabble. We'll, we'll do Home Alone. I think people remember it mostly for like <laughs> the torture scenes where Kevin is just, you know, burning and scalding and trying to murder the thieves that break into his house but there's a, a like that's like 20 minutes of the whole movie there's like a whole long um you know story the him alone and the the parents leaving and john candy's in it and he's hilarious and you got some great actresses and actors all over the place and it's got a lot of heart i think at the end when kevin finally reunites with his mom that brings a tear to my eye every time and the score is fantastic great score to that one We'll also do, let's do Weird Science, just because it's hilariously fun. Kelly LeBrock. Mm. Yes, Kelly LeBrock is very desirable in that movie. That is who I, you know, if you may, if you had a computer, like make a woman. I feel like Kelly Brock would be at the top of the list there. And the way they've turned Bill Paxton into a big piece of shit, I think is great. Like <laughs> Chet, man, love Chet. Great performances from... Anthony Michael Hall and uh, the other kid, whatever his name is, nobody knows, nobody remembers him. Uh, number two, we'll do National Lampoon's Vacation, classic, just an absolute classic of the genre. Love Chevy Chase. I aspire to be him in my family life. I'm missing the 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 family uh, cruiser, family station wagon, but I do have many of the same. Uh, cardigans that he has so i'm working my way there number one though gotta be ferris bueller's day off it's just a great movie the, the use of music and that is fantastic donka shane and twist and shout and just everything about it just a classic uh love the gordy howe jersey that uh cam what's his name cam yeah cameron wears throughout uh, just emotionally poignant, but fun and uh, just a great movie. All right, I'll go next so we can close this out with uh, someone who knows what they're talking about. Why don't you ever wear your cardigans on the show? That'd be a nice touch. Uh, all right, I got a couple in common with Joe. Uh, Home Alone, of course, uh, big in my childhood. Saw it in theaters, I believe. I'm pretty sure. Um, probably. Probably the one I've seen the most, except for this next one, which I've definitely seen the most, uh, Christmas Vacation every year. Uh, just one of the funniest Christmas movies and movies flat out. I think it's hilarious. Start to finish. A lot of belly laughs in that one. I, too, am a John Candy fan, so I've also got Uncle Buck. Been a long time since I've seen that one, but I have seen it. <laughs> and... Uh, even bigger than a John Candy fan, I'm a, a an even bigger uh, Steve Martin fan. So got to have trains, planes, and automobiles. That's a classic. And then uh, number one for me, I'm going to go Breakfast Club. I just think it's, you know, got all the high school 
stereotype archetypes just uh all coming together making friends just a, a coming of age tale and you know the fist pump at the end it's iconic iconic stuff so there you go all right good job boys good job boys if we were doing music alone it would be different but we're not 16 candles would be up there for me because thompson twins if you were here at the end there awesome my number five though i'm gonna go to one he didn't direct he penned mr mom and anything with a vessel for michael keaton to just be the the front man star of the show i love michael keaton he's one of my favorite performers of all time i think he's brilliant in mr mom number four i am going to go with I'll go with Uncle Buck as well. Love John Candy. I think it's fantastic. Um, it's not a perfect movie. His role in it is tremendous. I am not really buying the drama of the mother and the daughter. Like, it seems we didn't really earn that at the end, where it's just like the big payoff. And it's like just, just a quick scene at the beginning where she's like, no, you shouldn't have moved this out of Indianapolis. And that's supposed to get us through the whole movie of their like drama together. And saying, like, oh, okay, not enough there, John Hughes, for me um i'll throw in planes trains and automobiles as well um there's just like this real good wholesome 80s-ness to it where john hughes just makes these pictures about families that are basically just like the 50s domesticated lifestyle 30 years later in the 80s and just like when he finally gets home and there's like that warm house with like the well-made dinner table and all that and the wife comes down the stairs and all that and that's just a brilliant role for John Candy to simultaneously annoy the shit out of you and also make you feel bad. That's not easy to do, um, but he does it quite well. I am not going to put Home Alone anywhere near this. The musical score by John Williams is fantastic. Joe's right. Performances are great, but I can't get over the biggest plot hole in the world. Why don't they just call the damn kid? Oh, well, the tree lines knocked down the power. Bullshit, dude. The kid orders like 50 goddamn pizzas. Those phones were working just fine. So I can't put that on there. I'm going to go with Breakfast Club as well at my number two hole here. Is it pretty ridiculous and contrived that everyone's biggest life moment ever happened in a four-hour detention center? Yeah, but, you know, also, like, it's just really charming, and everyone is just such a character, and it's so well-acted, and I love the principal in it, like, when he's, like, just threatening to beat up Bender. He's like, come on, let's see how tough you really are. Like, that's so friggin' badass. I just want him to slug slug him there. But my number one, Joe's right, it's Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which is just one of the most fun, entertaining films of all time. The rewatchability for it is just sensational. I don't know what happened to Matthew Broderick after that. His career is so uninteresting to me. Other than that, he's got some good movies, but like the charm and everything that he has in that just completely gone after that like what the hell happened to him like glory was a bit of a misstep terribly cast in that should not have been in that cable guy's pretty funny but that's all jim carrey's doing i don't know man ferris bueller's awesome it's really well made and i don't think you can beat it and we love it here in chicago any chance we get to talk about it or watch it we take it so because you, you can say whatever you want about broderick but his work in election is phenomenal right he is fantastic in election and i love election you are right thank you for saving me from that i forgot but still such a different role than like ferris like he's so cool in ferris bueller like i don't know all right so there you go cramtober that is the end of it like i said at the end of the uh previous videos uh, we're taking a week off next week. Not entirely. There will be content. There will be videos coming out, but they will not be a listography. Uh, two weeks from now will be the next listography, and that will be Stevie Ray Vaughan and uh, six albums. So get started on that. You got some time. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.